I am Joseph Victor Ikawa. I have a PhD in environmental planning and management. Um, however, like the rest of us, um, doing a slightly different thing compared to what I studied. But during my spare time, this is all that I do. James Bradley and myself, we went to bird in uh, Mount Elgon, which is on the western bit of Kenya, bordering Uganda. Mount Elgon actually straddles Kenya and Uganda. We were looking for moorland francolins, so we decided to go quite high, 3,000 meters above sea level, and we wanted to really look for this elusive moorland francolins. Of late, the reports are not as many as they've been in the past. When I was growing up, I could wake up in the morning and uh, there was always this dove which used to go to to kissy to to kissy which was like, you know, I am the red eyed dove. But, well, that's the English translation. The the real one was, you know, people are going to kissy. People are going to kissy. Kissy is a town which is near uh, where I grew up. So I'm in uh, Elgon. It's really cold. Uh, so we camped the night there. It was quite exciting. Uh, prepared uh, some basic meals. Had a shot of whiskey. And it was actually quite nice. So we slept early. The next morning, we broke camp and attempted to chase for the francolins. We needed to go to around 3,500, a little higher up than where we slept. Okay, cheers. Hello. Trees with shrub crosses. The cloud cover may help us with the heat. Yep, come closed. James Bradley is a, a really good friend. How I met him was quite interesting. I uh, was going through some papers online on some publications around uh, Homer Bay County. And I kept seeing all these papers done by James Bradley on Guasi Hills, which is, Guasi Hills is literally the property. I mean, the whole mountain range behind my property in Homer Bay. And I wrote to him and I told him, I'm, I'm keen to uh, do a bit more research, to walk up the mountain and explore some of the species that are there. And, you know, from there on, it's been really interesting. We've managed to work together and publish a book called Birds of Homer Bay. And we've also done a couple other publications together. So uh, he's become quite a good friend and I always look forward to him coming to Kenya once a year and then we traips, uh, we go around the country. In 2013, and the period between 2013 and 2019, researchers uh, Gideon and Topfer studied some martins in Ethiopia and they spent a lot of time in the high elevation areas in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is 
a country that sits somewhere between Egypt, Somalia, and Kenya um, in the Horn of Africa. And they were to encounter something extraordinary, some small birds nesting at great heights, which they could not readily identify. Astonishingly, we saw some martins. Well, we were like, are those martins? Are those grey rumped swallows? No, they are not grey rumped swallows. Are they plain martins? No, they are not plain martins. They are not banded martins. And uh, we decided to stop and, you know, spent maybe an hour or two just walking about trying to uh, get the identity of the martin. So we got a couple of grainy shots, uh, but because they were flying in and out, in and out, we were able to get some good audio recordings, which worked pretty well when we reviewed them later. Actually, we regretted not spending more time there because at some point we were like, Let's go continue looking for the Francolins. Mount Elgon is a dormant volcano located on the border between Uganda and Kenya in East Africa. The vegetation at the top of the mountain varies depending on the altitude and climate. At the lower elevations of the mountain, the vegetation is dominated by montane forest, which includes species such as cedar, olive, and fig trees. As the altitude increases, the forest gives way to bamboo, which grows in dense thickets. At high elevations, above 3,000 meters, the vegetation becomes more sparse and consists mainly of heath and moorland. This is characterized by low-growing shrubs and grasses, as well as giant lobelias and ground cell. Above 4,000 meters, the vegetation becomes very sparse with lichens and mosses dominating the landscape. Everlastings, also known as everlasting flowers or pepper flowers, are a group of plants that retain their flowers and leaves long after they've been cut or dried. They're well adapted to the harsh conditions of the high altitude zones of Mount Elgon, where they can survive at extreme temperatures and exposure to high levels of ultraviolet radiation. Some of the species of everlastings that can be found on Mount Elgon include Helichrysum, which is commonly known as straw flowers or curry plant, Gnaphalium, which is commonly known as cardweed or rabbit tobacco, and these produce bright yellow, white or pink flowers that can be seen blooming on the mountain slopes during the dry season. Tussock grasses are a type of grass that grows in dense clumps with tufted leaves that can be up to one meter long. They are well adapted to the cold and windy conditions of high altitude areas and can survive in nutrient poor soils. Some of the tussock grasses that can be found on Mount Elgon include Festuca and Agrostis. Bunch grasses are another type of grass that can be can be found on, on, on the mountain above 2,700 meters. Both tassock are important components of high altitude grasslands ecosystem. So between 1910 or even before, there are certain species that used to be recorded in Kenya but have disappeared. And what we are attempting to do is to find these lost species or to get completely new ones that um, have not been recorded in Kenya before. And that's almost like a life mission for me to have a very thorough understanding of the different birds that uh, are in Kenya and to attempt to trace some of the birds that have been lost to science. So, we've suspected that there is a bristle bill in uh, Nyanza. There are species like uh, uh, Clapperton francolin that is not as common as 
it used to be. Records of black shouldered nightjar are much less than they than they are. Sooty boo boo, speckled tinkerbird, and there's a lot more. Some much more special than others. Some ranking quite high in terms of uh, being endangered. Like within the Tana Delta, there are two species that are data deficient. And um, there's need for concerted effort to get to get them. So white-winged apalis in the lower Tana was last seen a long time ago, uh, maybe 1961. That makes it over 60 years now since it was last reported. Um, same with the uh, Tana River Sisticola, which is almost like a mythical bird which uh, whose sample is available, but no one has ever seen it after that. No, we went uphill and the Franklins weren't there, and yet we had this mystery to, to resolve. So unfortunately, time moved on and uh, we had to drive back to Nairobi. So after a couple of weeks, uh, so when we got to Nairobi, it was quite clear. Uh, these were different martins than what we're used to. And um, we needed much clearer photos. The photos we had, yes, you could tell that there was something different, but the lighting was wrong and um, we thought it wasn't good for publications again after two weeks. And um, got a lot more clearer photos and I was able to observe the martins quite higher up as well. <laughs> 